look how beautiful that hot pot broth is. This has to go for another two and a half to three hours and uh, we're going to make a miso and miso and kombu seaweed uh, kelp broth for the other side that's going to be for the shrimp. We're also going to have shrimp. Hey, so Ellie, yeah. does mommy like spicy food? No. No. Does Anna like spicy food? No. Do you like spicy food? No. Only your daddy, right? Yeah. And grandpa, me. It's now frozen, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it into chunks and we're going to freeze that. We'll save just a little bit for daddy and for grandpa to put into the smaller hot pot. Fresh cut beef bones. Okay, in, in, inside the, the okay. Yes. Look at that. Look at that crackmanship. Breaking this down for our beef bones to make hot pot. There you have it. Go to the Asian family markets to get your beef bones cut fresh to make hot pot. All right, it is time to make hot pot. Hot pot. Two compartments. What do we got? We've got aerobatics, Szechuan red chili peppers. We've got everything we need for our five spice powder. We even have some extra wonderful things that are add to the umami flavor. We've got some Chinese authentic color rock sugar. We're going to use some green cardamom as well as white cardamom. We're going to add some turmeric. We're going to make the shiitake mushroom its own uh, dashi. We've got some plum tomatoes which have less seeds. And in fact, we washed off any seeds that were in the can. We've got all our different types of sliced meat from our Asian butcher. We've got beef. We've got lamb. And pork belly. There's our pork belly. There's our sliced beef. And here we have some sliced lamb. It's going to be absolutely delicious. We're going to let that thaw because we're making just the broths. Just the two broths that are going to go in our two compartment today. We're going to make them a day ahead. We're going to use these wonderful beef tallow bones as well as pork bones. And we're going to use some of this beef hind shank. We're going to get this into this pot over here. We're going to cover it with some cold water. And then what happens is all the impurities will come to the surface. There'll be a white froth. We'll skim that off. And then we will rinse the beef tallow bones and the pork bones and the beef hind shank. And we will put that back into a pot, cover it with water. And we will saute our aromatics. Cut them or just crack them. Remember to wash your hands. You can do this with gloves. 
Don't touch your eyes after you've done this. Alright, there's our pork and beef bones that have been blanched. They have been rinsed off and now they're in cold water. We're getting this wok hot. We're going to do our red Szechuan chili peppers. We're actually going to add these in there. They won't be too spicy. We seeded them. We're going to do them in sesame oil. The wok is hot. Sesame oil. Right in there as such. Them cook until we get nice and toasty. Then what we're going to do is we're going to let them cool. We're going to put them in our magic blender and we're going to pulsate them. Shiitake mushrooms, we're going to get them on and uh, let them rehydrate. We're gonna get our wok hot here. We've got our five spice powder ready to grind with the rock sugar and some cardamom in there. We're gonna use turmeric. Got our aromatics, we're gonna add some bay leaves to that. And we have our nice Szechuan red chili paste. All right. The wok is hot. It gets a little bit of olive oil, just a little bit. Let's get our tomatoes in. Spice powder. And let's let these tomatoes cook down. Add just a little bit. Let's add a little bit now. Just a little bit. Okay, that's enough. More than enough. So let's finish this off. We'll add black bean paste, and then we'll add the red bean paste and these aromatics back in. There's that nice dark color and our aromatics. Mm -hmm. Get that mixed in. All right, it's cleanup time. Mmm, that looks good. Let's add that to the pot. Alright, so when this cools, we're chill it in the refrigerator. Alright, here is our hot pot ready to rock and roll. We've got our wonderful fish and seafood uh, base broth soup. And we've got our, over here, we've got our rolling boil uh, mild beef and tomato, we've got spicy beef and tomato, and we've got all the fixings 
that go with the hot pot. We've got some bon pho noodles, some sliced pork belly, some sliced beef, some wonderful vegetables, and we've got all of our dipping sauces and some jumbo shrimp. So now people are gonna fix their bowls and then they're gonna go into the dining room and sit down and enjoy hot pot after they dip their meats and then they can come back or they can sit here at the counter and enjoy it. But there's how to do hot pot at home. Folks, it's time to eat. Here's what we have. We have, these are lotus root right there. They're very delicious. You're gonna put that into the hot pot. Put another one in, into your mild beef. And now what you wanna do is, to, I would put some corn in, one side. Anybody else want corn? Yes. All right, so you can put as many pieces as you want. This is all going in your one bowl. Oh. And now there's some watercress. I would put that in last. She wants the sky in her mushroom or bean sprouts. Let me I'll try it all. Okay, what about bean sprouts? You can put them right in your bowl when you're your hot broth, okay? There you go. So there's your vegetables. Now what you want to do is just let that sit for about, you know, what about zucchini? 30 You want some zucchini or squash? Absolutely. Well, you know I like zucchini. Okay. Okay. Now what you want to do is put the vegetable tongue back with the vegetables so they stay clean there and pick up your meat tongue. And now th that's pork belly right there. That's pork belly. Okay. And this is beef. So you want right in there? Yep, right down in there. Take as many pieces as you want. No, I'm good like with that. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna actually watch that cook, and then you're gonna take cling tongs, which are right there, and you're going to put that in your bowl. Now I recommend you take these tongs and put some noodles in the bottom of the bowl. There you go. Look, your meat is done. So now you bring your bowl over, and try start picking your pieces out and put it into your bowl. I suggest that you sauce your meat in your bowl So we got some teriyaki sauce. Where? This? Right here. This is teriyaki. You like teriyaki. This? Yep. Drizzle that over there. Okay. And you've got over here, you can try different sauces. You've got a kepi Japanese mayonnaise and cilantro and garlic right there. All right. That's a shiitake mushroom and cilantro sauce. All right. One off. Next up. Yeah, sky is good stuff. Those are mushrooms, those big ones there. Front, that's really, that's the beef. And that's the pork. And put them right into to here. Grab them by the tail. There goes the shrimp. Put as many as you want in there. Okay, so really, the noodles I put in here. Yep, yep. Put some noodles in, the, in your bowl. Your hot pot is ready. So now you just scoop everything out of there into your bowl. Look at that meat. That's already cooked. That looks absolutely delicious. See, if you leave it in too long, it'll be tough. That's why I just, like, one minute. Now you go out and you're spending 30 bucks a head to eat this in a restaurant and you can make it at home. I'm gonna get you some broth. And it's, you know, you can dine out and enjoy it, but I recommend, hey, try it here, try it there. And let's get your shrimp out before I give you some broth. Here, I got your shrimp right here. Look at these bad boys. They're cooked, fully cooked. Where's the apples? Look at that. Wow, that looks delicious. Look at that, fully cooked. How many did you put in there? Five. Five, okay. <laughs> that. All right, come on with that broth. Mmm, more? Yes, I would say more. Grab your chopsticks, yeah. you're off and running. That is a Japanese mayonnaise, cafe mayonnaise with garlic and cilantro. That will go well with your shrimp. All right, folks, I underestimated my four-year-old granddaughter. Ellie, you're having hot pot, too? I thought you were having pizza. You are a trooper. She likes noodles. 
Shrimp. All right, so I got her. I got her in here, and uh, she's got her hot pot in there now. You said what? That's not spicy. No, you help me make it. You help me make it, Ellie. It wasn't spicy. She needs hot spicy. Oh no! See, that's what most people think when they hear the word hot pot. They think hot as in spicy hot. But this is the spicy broth on the side for Grandpa. And this one here is your mild one. Can I get a bit of that spicy Yeah, absolutely. Okay, let me see her bowl. You gotta put her down for a minute. Or you can hold her if you want to. Can you come closer? Grandpa thought he got all the tails off. <gasps> Look at that. Well, when you, if you eat it, you have to take the part off. My granddaughter is four years old and she knows how to eat shrimp. When your four-year-old granddaughter turns down pizza to eat homemade Asian hot pot at your house, consider it the highest honor. Anna's up. Anna hot pot. And take you take these clean tongs right there, right there to the right, and the tiny ones. Yep, and put whatever you want for vegetables into the hot pot. That's my daughter. My, she's going for the squash. What's that's the difference? It. Uh, this is beef. That's seafood. So you can put it in either side. It doesn't hey. really matter. There you go. Yellow squash, yummy. And some green squash. Ah, you're getting your good vegetables. Now I would try a couple of these the lotus roots right here. These I think you'll like. They have a nice taste to them. These white ones right here. What if I don't like them? If they just leave them in the bowl. And you can always pick it up with your finger too into the hot broth to be cooked. How about some corn? Mushroom? Those are those are mushrooms. Scallion? There you go. Put some bean sprouts in your bowl. No corn? No. Oh, okay. That's fine. That's your noodles that are going to go in, in your bowl. What's that? This right here? Yes. That's watercress. I, I would try some of it. was the white one. No. Oh. You want to try Should I that? put it in there? Yep. Put it, in put it right in there because you want to cook it for Get it started up in there. Yeah. You can pick it up with your fingers if you want to. And there you go. Yeah. All right. Put your clean tongue, your vegetable tongs down. Grab yourself some meat. Like that one or this meat one? or seafood. Yeah, but this one. But not both? You can have both. So Pork. Put them in I would put them into the beef one and put the seafood in the sea the shrimp in the shrimp one. Is this bacon? You, huh? Is this That's bacon? like bacon. It's pork belly. Sliced pork belly. You're gonna like that. I would grab another piece. There you go. You like beef? Mm -hmm. uh, the beef's right there. You want to grab a couple slices of the beef? Yep. Oh, I thought they were the same. Nope. No, we actually had lamb, but I didn't get you to put oh, any I don't lamb. Like lamb. I didn't think so, so I didn't make lamb. I'm saving lamb for the I rest of the week. You could just leave that with the meat. Yeah. That one right here with the meat. And then use your fingers. Just pick up your tails and drop them in to. There you go. Take as many shrimp as you want. Okay, we have gotten everybody fed. Now it's time for Grandpa. Grandpa's going for the big bowl. Why? Because I don't like to get up twice. So I'll put some of this shiitake. And we've got our kefe, our Japanese mayonnaise, and garlic, and cilantro. We've got some of this sesame sauce. We're gonna put a little bit of uzu panzu, not too much over those shrimp and just a drizzle of teriyaki. Yummy. Hot pot day with the family. Communal eating. Time to head to the dining room. Look at that. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Absolutely delicious, folks. Thank you, everybody, for being part of the hot pot hack. Yeah.
Okay, to show you a practical application of dashi, I took out some more sliced pork belly to thaw here for hot pot for tonight, but it's 9.58 in the morning and I'm hungry, so I'm going to use some of this sliced lamb, since I'm the only one that eats it, and some century egg, 1,000 year old egg, uh, preserved duck egg, and I've got some kombu some dried kelp soaking here and I've got a, a couple of rehydrated shiitake mushrooms I've got some niboshi which is the knee boil and boshi uh, dried anchovy I've got my bonito flakes I'm going to use a little bit of that five spice powder and what you want to do is when you make kanji in the morning I may even add some miso so we'll have a five-way dashi broth for some kanji here this morning but you want to do is always make sure that you wash your rice this is the jasmine rice always make sure you wash it so and what you want to do is you want to take your fingers and you want to rub each see how that water is getting cloudy but I'm not going to use this water because as you can see how cloudy it's getting you need to keep rubbing them and changing the water until the rice comes the rice water is clear. Once our kelp is done soaking for 30 minutes, we're going to add that first to the water and we're going to bring that up to a simmer. Then uh, we're going to let that simmer for about 15 to 20 minutes in this water and then we're going to take it out and then we're going to add the bonito flakes. Now I've got sliced lamb and pork with our 1,000 year egg, our century egg, we're gonna crack that other one. So here's the kombu, the kelp in here. You can take off all of that froth off the top of that with a spoon. We've got our neboshi, our dried anchovies. We've got them in two cups of, of cold water and we've got our bonito flakes. We've also got some miso and some shiitake. It's going to be a five-way dashi. Decided to put the uh, pork on top and the sliced lamb underneath on a flat plate instead of on that angle. There is our clear dashi broth. We're now going to add, to make it a five weight dashi, we're going to add some miso, white miso, to this. And at this point, your rice has been rinsed in several changes of cold water. Never let your kelp come to a boil. Never let this come to a boil. If it comes to a boil, it will be bitter. So you always want to have a simmer. Now there goes our rice. We can use the broth to get all of that out of the bowl. Put that to the side and uh, we're going to let that cook. We're going to turn up the heat and of course I've showed you many times how to use chopsticks and put your lid on so that the rice doesn't overboil.
Kanji, hot chili sauce, and some beautiful toasted sesame seed, black and white, bonita flakes, and dried nori. Pido kake. Pork, sliced lamb, and century egg. Mmm, kanji.